And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Rogue Actions. Happy Monday, everybody. We are finally at the end of October. Halloween is just around the corner. And oh my god, I'm scared of Shaka. Should have should have seen me in my Jedi outfit. You would have been scared for different reasons. I, I was gonna say I was scared because of your hat that you wore, but you know, there's that. My hat? Oh, that hat. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty scary, yes. Uh, you had to be there to see it. Welcome in, everybody. If you are new to the channel, go ahead, leave a like, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff over my channel. You know the drill. Three videos over here. Three videos over on Shaka's channel as well. Links are in the description below. Leave that man a follow, like, subscribe. You won't miss all the amazing content that we kind of sort of push out, maybe? Not really? It's content. It is content. <laughs> that much is true. Oh, man. Shaka, how are you doing, my man? Doing pretty good. A little bit of a headache from uh, running into a shelf. But uh, outside of that, doing pretty good. I, how about you? I, I have a headache as well uh, from uh, other things. Other things, yes. <laughs> Why do things I do this were, to myself? I don't know. Things, things that were more enjoyable than a shelf. <laughs> yes, yes, things that are more enjoyable uh, than than a shelf for sure, and then not more enjoyable the morning after. Yes. <laughs> All, All right. Done that. Oh yes, you have. Yes, you have. All right, we got some things to talk about, guys. You're not going to want to miss all this stuff because outside of nothing happening in Swiggo, there's a lot to talk about on Rogue Actions today, so you want to stay tuned. Starting mm -hmm. off with, of course, the first thing, the mini meme of the week. Uh, this one, people in Star Wars. You got, or people in Star Wars that are smoking hot, first off, because I don't know why I read that. You, you, you're just going to have to bear with me for a little bit here, all right? <laughs> people in Star Wars who are smoking hot. You've got Leia. I'll agree on that one. Mm -hmm. You've got mm -hmm. Padme. <laughs> Whoo, Padme is a mama. She's the number one in our She is the right number one. Abso yep. Absolutely. So, she's definitely smoking hot. Uh, Ray, not the character. Daisy Ridley, yes. Ray, no. Just no. Just no. Darth Vader, yes, he is uh, he's definitely smoking hot. <laughs> and who is that? Owen and Aunt Beru? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, by definition, they are very smoking hot because there's smoke coming off of their hot bodies. It's funny. This reminds me of another meme I saw just the other day. I forget when it was and where it was, but it was it was uh, hot ants in Disney and it shows like a cartoonified version of a hot ant and then hot ants in Star Wars and it just showed Aunt Peru. Getting, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Like it's, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. You are not wrong. Guys, this meme submission was done by Bat Dad. Shout out to Bat Dad. Uh, if you would like to get your memes shouted out on Rogue Actions every week, go into my Discord, put in a Rogue Actions meme submission, and myself and Shaka will pick from it before every recording so that you get your little shout out every week on Rogue Actions. So... Shout out to Bat. I think actually Bat is now two weeks in a row. I think it's two in a row. Yeah, I think it's two in a row. So congrats, Bat Dad. All righty. So moving on, we have something coming out in this game starting tomorrow, but eventually he will be active uh, in our rosters in the next two weeks for people who have, uh, you know, obviously gotten red crate or maybe gold crate and farm some extra extra shards of them along the way. Ezra. Exile. I don't. I don't like the fact that he's an exile because he's not really an exile. But that's tomato potato. It's all the same. Uh, We've had this discussion. He was exiled, Ram. He was exiled by his own choosing, but it was still an exile. Then it wasn't an exile. It, it was. was. It was a voluntary. Volu that Yoda, word. Yoda voluntarily exiled himself as well. So it can be a exile of your own choosing. So then it would be a hermit because hermit Yoda. Uh, Yoda is not an exile. I think Hermit Ezra is going to become the common nomenclature. I think exile just works because it's easy to do like EE. 
But mm. Hermit Ezra, I think, rolls off the tongue a lot better than... I like Hermit Ezra. Ezra. Yeah. Hermit, I, I, and really plus, worse. he was moving around in shells, you know? Like, that just makes sense. Hermits. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody watched The Little Mermaid that day. I'm not sure where the where that <laughs> stuff came from, but... <laughs> Guys, let's do some apps. This will be great. <laughs> um. All right, so... We'll we'll get into the particulars. I think everybody has already kind of agreed. I think even CG is like Ezra will go with Ahsoka. That's just it's going to happen. However, and again, we'll we'll get into this over on Shaka's video as to Ahsoka not being in the game as of right now. So, what are you going to do with this character that we're going to unlock? And when you whenever you do get Ahsoka, where are you going to use him prior to Ahsoka? So. Over here, my instant first thought, because so uh, Ezra Exile, Hermit Ezra, I'm just going to say Hermit Ezra because that's easier. Uh, I like that one. Um, Hermit Ezra is a Spectre, which we don't have any use for him in those teams right now. And he's a Jedi and light side. That's his only three tags. So my instant thought of where can I use Ezra once I get him was a JML team. I think that's that's going to be a, a a very popular team for sure because JML leader of the Jedi makes sense, yep. right? So uh, I have here JML, and it's not a perfect team. It's just the team that I thought of off the top of my head. Hermit uh, Hermit uh, uh, Ezra, Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, Hermit Yoda, of course, and Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Right? Uh, you got a lot of damage here. You got obviously the tank. Uh, Ezra is going to be taunting on and off. Um, you got healing from Hermit Yoda. You got stuns. You've got the, um, the, the the spreading of all the all the stats from Hermit Ezra. It's going to be a very solid team. I feel like. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be solid. And, and I know for me at least. So when I'm putting together like my JML squad, uh, the fifth member is always kind of fluid. Uh, like Cal, Luke, and Hermit Yoda are always like the guaranteed three that go with him. And then that last one, it, usually it's Jedi Knight Revan to be able to mark someone specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you're looking, especially for a more defensive setup in particular, then I think Ezra could be nice. The only, the only detriment I see in this team is that he does do the resilient defense. So people are going to be able to bypass JML's taunt to go for him when he has resilient defense. So depending on how thick he is when he comes out, that could mm -hmm. be a potential problem with that team. But I think overall, it's certainly a good one to use. Um, I, I So I think as kind of a sort of solution to that problem to some degree. Uh, so I, I prefer Ray. I think Ray might work a lot better here. Um, because I know for me, at least, at least the way that I do my GAX, JML is an offensive team. And more often than not, when you're running JML offensively, you need Darth Revan. Or not Darth Revan, you need Jedi Knight Revan. Um, so for me, I think he can't fit in that team from an offensive standpoint. I mean, if you don't have Jedi Knight Revan, sure. But I think more often than not, he's going to get booted for Jedi Knight Revan. So I think it'd be interesting to put him on that Ray team on defense, though. Um, the reason being is, so one, he's an additional, you know, possible tank because of the resilient defense. Um, and with Ray, now I'm intrigued to see how this works because in his kit, it says something to the effect that he can't gain buffs. But Ray's damage immunity, I think, would still apply because it's one of those, you know, unresistible. Un unresistable undispellable all that yeah. jazz yeah so so i think that might still apply to him so let's say you get that resilient defense down some and you do get to the point where you can finally kill him that heal immunity is going to pop up or the damage immunity is going to pop up but the bigger factor is it just slows you down from being able to get to ben and as a result getting to ray like it just adds another layer of a person that you have to bypass their taunt and it makes it really difficult. Same thing with, uh, so this, in this specific team, this is the team that I'd probably run uh, with L3. It gives you an additional tank with L3. Ezra's going to gain resilient defense. Then you got to get the Ben. Then you finally get the right. Like, it's just, it's going to be like whack-a-mole. Like, it's just going to take you forever to get that team down um, to beat them. So It's a timeout. Yeah. It's and especially much, yeah, with timeout. that Sordicron. 
Yeah. That sword of Kron is going to make it nasty. Mm -hmm. And for me, obviously, I would run that on defense. So yeah. make but. your opponent figure it out. Yep. Um, exactly. I mean, and, and so Ezra, I think, is going to be fairly thick anyways. Uh, if you if you look at his kit, just the way he's yeah. designed, uh, he's going to gain exile for the rest of the battle at the start of the battle. Um, but when he gains exile, the first time each ally is exiled. So I'm reading that as each ally, not each other ally. So that would include himself. The mm -hmm. first time he's exiled, he's going to gain 30% crit chance, 60% defense, and 100% max health and protection for the rest of the battle. And that's going to be factored in. It should be factored in after the lead of Ray or JML. So all those stat paddings that he's going to get out of that is also right. going to be increased by 100% with the the exile buff. So um, he's he might actually be fairly thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's with Ray in particular. You know, she gives stats as well, um, and that'll apply to him because he's a light side character. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think I think those are I think without a doubt these are the two teams that you would you would consider. Um, JML works the same way in terms of being light side allies. So I it's obviously JMK is a no go because he's Galactic Republic only, yeah. so it's not going to fit there. Um, and then outside of that, I you know you start to lose options really fast. You know other you know maybe a Jedi Knight Revan team if you don't have JML. Um, Jedi Knight Revan could work. Um, Basila Lee could work. Uh, yeah. maybe Jedi Knight Cal as well. Jedi Knight Cal lead. You yeah, don't really see that a whole lot, but yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, though, I I don't see a spot where that fits where he would fit. To be honest with you, because uh, most, most other teams are ooh. like faction specific. There's no general light side. What stuff for the most part? What about? Hold on. What what about? A star killer team uh that could work he meets the requirements he's a jedi you replace in in this in this lineup right now i have mace windu but you replace mace with with ezra at with the stat padding here's the only downside to it so ezra is not a tank he's a support so he's nope. not going to tank in that team it would have to be through his own kit that he gets the resilient defense. Right. It'd be through his own kit, but he'd still he'd still function the same way with that resilient defense and with the additional stat padding of the the six percent defense and max health protection, plus Star Killer's unique um, affected in there with um, uh, no he doesn't oh no no it's just the Jedi tank allies that gain that. He doesn't shed it, uh, share any buffs, does he? Dark Killer? I don't think so. I don't believe so. Star Killer gains it based off the team comp, but not correct. Uh, oh no! All allies gain the following bonuses: hundred percent crit damage and max health, hundred percent max protection the first time Star Killer is defeated, oh, okay. thirty-five speed, and immune to days and stun. Yeah, so all allies gain that. So yeah, Star so Killer could be another team that you that you could see possibly. Yeah, I, so yeah, I think it depends on your whether you do offense or defensive. If you're taking them for offense, then yeah, JML, or if you've got a sub in Jedi Revan, throw him with Starkiller. Um, but if you're thinking more defensive, I think Ray, I honestly, Ray is probably your only bet defensively, unless you're yeah. throwing a Starkiller team on defense, I, which I've seen happen. People do it. Yeah. So it's possible. I don't, I don't, I very rarely see a JML on defense though. So, because C would still nuke that team. So I, I can't imagine you would want to do that. Yeah, it's C C plus one maybe. Nukes nukes JML and sometimes you yeah. don't even need C. Sometimes right. you can just do C by himself and it'll it'll still nuke them because of how counterproductive C is versus JML. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean Ray's definitely going to be the the defensive powerhouse. I think at this point I don't. Star Killer can hold on defense, especially with the Ufu Krons that's coming out. Star Killer could hold on defense, um, mm -hmm. but I think Ray's going to be your best bet. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to unlock Ezra. He's uh, you know obviously I've got him at 220 right now. He's he's gonna he looks nasty. Nice. So are you going to unlock him? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'll get I'll get Red Crate. I'll get yeah, Red Crate, yeah, yeah. and and that'll 
yeah, that'll be that'll be easy. I always I always get red crate for the most part. I think I've only ever gotten not red crate once, and that was a few months ago. I'm going through some stuff, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I um, actually mine's at two forty five because I've found that I have too much currency, <laughs> so I just have to spend it somewhere. So I've just been buying them. So I actually probably will go for gold crate this time. Okay, uh, and focus on the new datacron set instead this time. Yeah, so. yeah. I, obviously, you got the new datacron set. You're gonna be farming that. Um, I I tend to buy more gear than I do the shards, unless I need the shards. Yeah, I'm getting to the point where I. So usually I just get the signal data, but I might start getting more of the gear here. Yeah. Um, Furnaces, med packs, those yeah. those kind of things. You can never go wrong with uh, too much of those because everybody nope. needs them. So exactly. let's know down in the comments below what you guys think about the Ezra teams that we suggested. Is there any other teams out there that you think are going to be potential until Ahsoka comes out? More details to follow on that conversation in Shaka's video. Uh, is there any teams that you missed? Do you think these teams actually work or are we just shooting some smoke through our, through our I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that reference. Ignore that reference. I don't know. <laughs> Years. smoke coming out of her ears there we go ago, yeah. uh, maybe maybe it's been a <laughs> it's been a long day <laughs> all right so the balen event obviously last week we got uh that puzzle that came out and it ended up showing balen's abilities um some of some of balen's yeah i think it was still missing like his uniques yeah, it's missing uniques i think yeah yeah and pos probably a leader too because i don't think there's a leader on that team so he has to be a leader right i can't remember if it had a leadership on it or not but yeah it's definitely missing abilities I yeah think. it was missing abilities like soldier of fortune and all that stuff so yeah. point being is we've got that we don't have the character kit reveal technically yet and we don't have the event in game but we do have all the requirements that are in game now not farmable because Merrick's not farmable, but they are in game. People do have those characters up and ready to go. So the next question is, when is the event going to drop? And by our guesstimates, we're we're thinking what this Wednesday with a release date, probably of so in game on Wednesday release playable event Thursday, right? Yeah. So I'm guessing that the 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 next update will get pushed out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will probably include Balin, his kit, um, plus the event. The event, I don't think, will drop until Thursday. Yeah. Usually, the way they've been doing this, the last couple of events and things like this, they do the event on a Thursday, maybe a Wednesday if they push up the, the update a day early. Um, but they try to do it then so they have a couple of days, Thursday, Friday, to be able to fix any issues that might pop up. The player base has the weekend to be able to work on the event and then usually the event ends like on a monday or a tuesday that kind of thing so yeah my guess would be that it's probably going to be halloween um the 31st with the actual update coming out the day before that is what i would think i i don't imagine given that timeline that they're going to do a separate like kit and art reveal um if they do maybe it's today like as of release maybe they just pump that out on monday and then the update comes out on Wednesday. That is possible. So, but that's a tight timeline. So I don't yeah. know. That's kind of what I'm imagining. Now, so you're thinking this timeline based off of what reasoning? Just because we we just haven't gotten anything else? The datacrons. Datacrons are kind of the big. So yeah, yeah, this and then the the next thing that we're talking about on my side of the video, the Ahsoka, uh, all of this is very much based on Datacrons. When Datacrons are dusting, when Datacrons are coming out, things mm -hmm. like that. It's a little weird that they put out the Datacrons a week early, but I think they just were like, screw it, let's just do it. Or more reasonable, so they didn't do any kind of releases last week. Maybe they didn't want to release the Datacrons this week on top of the event as well. Um, and the other factor, and this is kind of, again, we're going to talk about this in the next part, CG of late tends to take an every other week approach to updates. Uh, one week they'll do an update, the next week they won't. So yeah. that's why I think because this update is basically locked in stone, 
because of the Balin event. That's why they didn't do one last week with the Datacrons, and they did it the week before instead. Um, that just seems to kind of be their cadence. But yeah, Datacrons for sure, I think, are the big the big reason that we can tell this is going to happen. Plus, it's been two weeks since Merrick was dropped, mm -hmm. and the timeline of that means that he's going to become crystal farmable on Wednesday, probably, when the update comes out. That would be my guess. Yeah. So he'll move to crystal farmable, um, and then Shin will move to free-to-play farmable at that point. So... Uh, no, because uh, we're still waiting on Great Mothers to be farmable. Free to play. So Great Mothers should oh, be wait. next. They're not farmable either. No. I mean, they're crystal mm -hmm. farmable, but yeah, so Great Mothers should be next, and then we should get Shin, and then Merrick. Oh, you're right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Great Mothers would be the next one to be free to play, and Mer or Shin wouldn't be at all then. Unless they push that and make both of them at the same time, but... I don't know about that. Either way, the, I, I think regardless of what what decision they do as far as farming, you're looking at some hefty uh, crystal dropping yeah. if you want to yeah. get Balin this cycle. If you want to wait, which talking, we don't think he's going to be like Bo and released every month. You're thinking more of a three-month cadence like Jar Jar, right? Yeah, that's kind of where I'm leaning at. So, Bo, I think the reason Bo was monthly, unlike other things that have had a three to six month cadence, is because Bo isn't connected to any other game mode at all yeah. in the game. And so, in order to push people to farm it, they just did it every month. So that way people could just mm -hmm. constantly go for it. There's no event that incentivizes you. Where in this case, I think that the next raid is going to be, you know, Peridia based. And the Balin team is going to be one of the teams you have to get. So they're probably going to do the release now. And then in three months from now, about the time that the next raid would come out, that's when the next event will probably drop, in my opinion. So, right. And you'll basically then, that means Ahsoka, you'll have one shot only to get her before the raid comes out. And then kind of like Jar Jar, like a month after the raid releases, you might be able to get her as well. Yeah. So it all depends on when exactly they drop the raid. If you guys remember, the the Naboo raid came out about a month earlier than what we were first thinking. We were thinking August, and it came out in July. So we had a month without Jar Jar coming around the second time. So it, it all depends on when they drop that raid as to whether we have, you know, Balin and or Ahsoka come out before the raid or once the raid hits. So it just kind of depends. Okay. I uh, either way, yeah, you're you're gonna be looking at a massive amount of crystal crystal mm -hmm. spending to get him yes. um uh, with Great Mothers not being farmable, Shin not being farmable, Merrick just being out, he's not even crystal farmable. I think he's only in the in the packs right now, the marquee packs. Yeah, he's Balin's gonna be expensive, but uh I he he looks so good. Yeah. Uh, based on based on at least what we're thinking from the Soldiers of Fortune mercenary tags um, and kind of what we're seeing from Merrick's kit and Shin Hadi's kit and what we're kind of putting two and two together to try to see how they're going to work. Balin's going to be an absolute powerhouse. So I'm very excited for him. Uh, let us know down in the comments below what you guys think about the Balin event. Are you ready for it? Is it going to be, do you think it's going to be out this week? Are you thinking it's going to be um, worthwhile to go after versus Ahsoka? Let Let's me ask not. a question here, Ram. Yeah, of course. So, so we've obviously talked about the date of the Balin event uh -huh. and kind of the duration. What do you think the event's going to actually look like? Like, what do you see the events being oh. within it? Oh. Because I think, like, we've talked about the Ahsoka one yeah. at length and what that's going to look like, but... Balin has a lot less to pull from in terms of what it would look like. I'm mean, here's, here's how my event's going to go in, in my head, right? This mm -hmm. is how I want to see it. I want, um, I think, phase one. Well, so it's an epic confrontation. Oh. So it depends on how they do the epic confrontation, right? Because so mm -hmm. gas was four phases. Yep. Bow was... How many phases? How many phases was Bo? I don't know. because You don't, don't know because you don't have her. <laughs> and I have her, but I didn't unlock her because I was out. So 
I don't know how many faces Bo was. Uh, I don't know how many. Uh, Malik was only one. So, all right. In in a perfect world, let's say that they have multiple phases. Phase mm -hmm. one, Shin and and uh, um, Balin are on the ship, and that's the whole sea where we are no Jedi, right? Yep. That's that's phase one. Phase two is Shin and Merrick in the woods fighting against Ahsoka and a Jedi training Sabine, which mm -hmm. is an absolute possibility of a skin that we could get in game. Mm -hmm. um, whether they split that up into two separate phases or they keep that in one phase and both, both all four players are on the same screen at the same time. I don't know. Um, phase three would be Balin versus Ahsoka in the, uh, the sphere world map type thing. Mm -hmm. And then phase four would be Balin versus Ahsoka on Peridia. And the ending of that, when you unlock Balin, is him standing out on the uh, on the father's arm uh, with, you know, looking out Ooh. in Peridia. That'd be cool. I almost... That, I, right? Cinematic. I like that ending, yeah. The, the only thing I might do differently with that, because I don't think they're going to give you Balin to use in two separate events like that. I think what they'll do is they'll only give them to you for the end one, the last one against Ahsoka. But I, what I could see instead of it being Merrick and Shin at the same time, I could see a Shin versus Jedi training um, Sabine second. I think that happens second. I can't remember for sure. Um, but then separately, it would be Merrick versus Ahsoka. So I, I see them separating those two okay. things. You lose with Merrick and then you go in and you win with Shin yeah. uh, against Jedi training. We'll call her for now Jedi training um sabine I, that's that so i think that'd be really cool i I really hope we get to see the, the skin of her mm -hmm. and that would coincide with what i think is going to happen that we're going to talk about in the next section too <laughs> yep absolutely so guys leave a like subscribe all that fun stuff down below hit the link to go to shaka's video right now because we're going to pick up this conversation right where it left off we got a lot of things to talk about over there. We'll see you next time for some more rogue actions. Until then, squadron dismissed.